Hello everyone, this is Ms. Fatma and in this video I'll be going over Act 1, Scenes 1 and 2 of Julius Caesar. We'll be studying this this week, inshallah. In uh, summary of Act 1, Scene 1, starts in a street, on a street in ancient Rome and we have Flavius and Marullus, which are two Roman tribunes. Uh, judges meant to protect the right of people. This is what tribunes meet. Uh, they accost a group of workmen and ask them to name their trades and to explain their absence from work. The first workman answers straightforwardly, but the second workman answers with a spirited string of puns that he's a cobbler and that he and his fellow workmen have gathered to see Caesar and to rejoice in his triumph over Pompey. Marilus accuses the workmen of forgetting that they are desecrating the great Pompey, whose triumph they once cheers so enthusiastically. He upbraids them for wanting to honor the man who is celebrating a victory in battle over Pompey's sons, and he commands them to return to their homes to ask for forgiveness of the gods for their offensive ingratitude. Flavius orders them to assemble all the commoners they can and take them to the banks of the Tiber and fill it with their tears of remorse for the dishonor they have shown to Pompey. So we see these tribunes' dissatisfactions with the commoners greeting uh, Caesar. Flavius then tells Marullus to assist him in removing the ceremonial decorations that have been placed on public statues in honors of in honor of Caesar's triumph. Marullus questions the uh, propriety of doing so on the day during which the feast of Luprical is being celebrated, but Flavius says that they must remove the ornaments to prevent Caesar from becoming a godlike tyrant and of course this will have consequences which we will see later on and for scene two opens with Caesar having entered Rome in triumph and he calls to his wife which is introduced here his wife is California and orders her to stand with Mark Antony who's about to run the traditional foot race of the Luprical. And he wants Mark Antony to touch her as he passes. Caesar shares the belief that if a childless woman is touched by one of the holy runners, she will lose her sterility. Now, uh, his wife was barren and he wanted children and he believed that if Mark Antony had touched her, uh, she might uh, bear a child. Then we hear a soothsayer calling from the cloud, uh, crowd, sorry, warning Caesar to beware the Ides of March. But Caesar pays no attention and departs with his attendants, leaving Brutus and Cassius behind. Cassius begins to probe Brutus about his feelings towards Caesar and here we see him planting the seeds of the conspiracy and the prospect of Caesar becoming a dictator in Rome. Brutus has clearly been disturbed about this issue for some time. Cassius reminds Brutus that Caesar is merely a mortal like them with ordinary human weakness and he says that he'd rather die than see such a man become his master. He reminds Brutus of Brutus' noble ancestry and of the expectations of his fellow Romans that he will serve his country as his ancestors did. Brutus is obviously moved but is unsure of what to do. Just to, uh, uh, I just want you to know that Brutus and Cassius are two good friends of Caesar. Brutus more than Cassius, Brutus was very close to Caesar. And uh, we continue Act 2, Scene 2, and we see that several times during their conversation, Cassius and Brutus here shouts 
and the sounds of trumpets. Caesar enters with, with his attendants and in passing he remarks to Mark Antony that he feels suspicious of Cassius. Okay, uh, he doesn't really, we, we can sense that he doesn't really like him. Who has a, he, he says, he, he says about Cassius, Caesar says that he has a hungry, lean and hungry look. He thinks too much and such men are dangerous. As Caesar exits, Brutus and Cassius stop Casca and converse with him. He tells them that Mark Antony offered the crown to Caesar three times, but that Caesar rejected it each time and then fell down in epileptic seizure. The three men agree to think further about the matter, and when Casca and Brutus have gone, Cas 